All right, we are going to look at the last part of 9.5, finding um, determinants of larger matrices like three by threes. We're going to look at solving systems of linear equations using Kramer's rule. And we are going to find the area of a triangle using a matrix when we just know the vertices. All right, so quick review. We are multiplying these two together. We are taking a row times a column. So we take 2 times 6, that's 12. We take negative 4 times negative 2, that's 8. We add them together. So my first number should be a 20. Okay. To get the second number in that row, we are still doing row 1, but now we're shifting to column 2. So now I'm using these numbers. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. Adding those, we get negative 2. Shifting now to row 2, going back to column 1. 4 times 6 is 24. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Adding those, we should get a 6. And last one, row times column. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 9 times 0 is 0. Adding, we get negative 4. Okay. We are moving to more calculator work as we go through this chapter. Don't forget the stuff you have to know how to do by hand. Okay, so make sure you're going back each day and revisiting how do I multiply matrices. That's the one topic that typically uh, students forget the process. Okay, all right, so shifting to Kramer's rule, we are going to take a 3 by 3 system and notice that the coefficients and constants are in red. When we change this into a matrix, we get rid of all the variable pieces, correct? So we are going to set up actually four different matrices from this, okay? Our A's are the coefficients of X's, our B's are the coefficient of Y's, C's are the coefficient for Z, and D's are the constants, okay? We are gonna create four matrices out of that, and we are gonna find the determinants of them. All right, so the D stands for determinant. We are finding the determinant of our X matrix and dividing by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Then for Y, we're taking the determinant of our Y matrix divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And for Z is the determinant of our Z matrix divided by the determinant of the coefficients. All right, so how do we create these matrices? The first one, just the plain D matrix, is just all of your coefficients, okay? So just like we did last week, we're going to take all of our coefficients and create a matrix. Do you remember what the straight bars mean? Normally a matrix has the squared, the uh, brackets, right? If we take those out and we just put the bars in, what are we saying? What? It's not absolute value when it's a matrix. What is it? What did I say we were going to find in this, in this section? Determinants? Yes? We can write DET in front of a squared off bracket matrix, or we can just put those numbers in the straight bars. Both mean you're finding the determinant. Okay? Every year I have kids come up on the test and say, what is it asking me to do? You have to know what those straight bars mean. Okay? So this means we are finding the determinant of our coefficient matrix. Okay? Now, the other three matrices that we have to set up, what we are going to do is each time we are going to take out one column of numbers and we're going to replace it with our constants. Okay? So if I want to find D sub X, somewhere in here, if I want to find D sub X, I'm going to take out the X column, which is my first column, and instead of those a values, I'm going to replace it with these. OK? 
okay? So I'm going to take out my A's and replace them with all my constants. To find D sub Y, I'm going to replace my Y values, the coefficients for Y, with those constants. And if I want to find D sub Z, I want the determinant of my Z matrix, I'm going to replace my Z values with those. Okay? So, I'm going to show you what you have to set up. Your calculator is actually going to do the finding of the determinant for us. We just have to set the matrix up. Okay? All right, so for the first one, always double check. Are your X's lined up? Are your Y's lined up? Are your Z's lined up? And are your constants lined up? If they're lined up that way, great. If they're not, you got to do some rearranging. Okay? So the first matrix that we are going to create is just our plain D matrix. All right, this is our coefficient one. Straight bars mean we're finding the determinant of this. And we are just taking the coefficients. So in my first for my x's, I have a 1, 1, and a 2. That's going to be my first column. Then I need my y's, 2, 4, 3. And then I need the z's, negative 1, negative 2, and 1. Okay, I'm going to find the determinant of that. We'll come back to what that is. We're just going to set up our matrices first. Okay, to find the x1, what I'm going to use to find my x coordinate. I am going to take that matrix that I just wrote down, but I'm going to replace my x's with my constant values. Okay? My second column stays the same. My third column stays the same. All I'm doing is replacing my x's with these. Okay? To find the y value. I'm going to take the first column and the third column and leave them the way they are. But I'm going to change my second column now to have my constants. All right, to find D sub Z. My first two columns are going to stay the same, and I'm going to replace my z's with my constants. Okay? So we have four matrices that we now have to find the determinants of. All right, so let's go to our calculators. We are going to go into our matrix screen on our calculator, so second and our inverse key. We need to go over to edit, and I'm going to edit matrix A. It is set up as a 3 by 3 already. If yours isn't, go ahead and change the size. And then we're going to enter our very first matrix, the one that we just labeled D. So 1. 2, negative 1 is the first row. 1, 4, negative 2 is the second row. And 2, 3, 1 is the third row. Okay? Now, it's your choice. You could set up all four matrices first. I tend to just keep using matrix A over and over again. Because once I tell it to find the determinant of A, I don't have to keep repeating that command. Okay? So I'm going to leave that as my matrix A. Quit out of it. Go back into matrix again. This time I want you to go over 1 to math. And you see the very first option. It says DET. It's going to find the determinant for us. Okay? Now we just have to tell it which matrix to use. 
So back into matrix, and I'm just naming it. I put it in matrix A. Okay, so it's going to do all the work. It's going to find the determinant and tell me the determinant of that big matrix is a 5. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change and put in matrix X. All right, go back to edit. Now, Matrix X just has one column that's different, right? So I should be able to go in and just change that very first column to be negative 4, negative 6, and 3. Okay? The other two columns stayed the same. Now, quit out of it. And we already have our calculator finding the determinant of matrix A, right? That's the last command. I've changed matrix A now. I can just hit enter, and it's going to find the determinant of that new matrix. Okay? So D of X is negative 10. Okay? Going back now, changing it to matrix Y. I'm going to have to change a few things here. My third column should still be okay, but I need to switch my first and second columns here. So now notice the second column has my constants in it. Okay, so I'm going to quit out of that. Hit enter again. Now it's going to find the determinant of that new matrix. All right, you guys got 20. Did I type something in wrong? That should be a negative 4. All right. There we go. Hang on. Did you get 5? Okay. All right. Now we need to go in and enter matrix Z. Okay? So we're going to put back first and second columns the way they should be and change our z's to our constants now. And my board's off again. All right, let's fix matrix z. All right, we should have a 2 here and a negative 4. All right. Quit out of that, and we get a 20 for that determinant. Yes? Okay, now, what we do with all of that, to find our x coordinate, we are going to take the determinant of our x matrix, negative 10, we're going to divide by the determinant of our coefficient matrix, which we said was a 5. So my x coordinate's negative 2. Okay, to find my y coordinate, I'm going to take the determinant of that matrix, 5 divided by the determinant of the
coefficient matrix. So my y coordinate is a 1. And for the z coordinate, we take the determinant of that matrix, 20, divided by our coefficient matrix determinant, and we get a 4. So the solution to the system is negative 2, 1, and 4. Okay? All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you to set up the matrices for the next one, and then we'll split it up and we'll each find one of our answers. So checking our setup, our first matrix here, just our plain D matrix, again, is our coefficients. So 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 4, 3. Okay? Then again, to find x, y, and z, we take each column one at a time and replace it with our constants. Are we good with the setup? Yes? Okay. So we'll split it up. You guys over here, find D, all right, the determinant of the coefficient matrix. You guys, D of X, okay, D of Y, D of Z. All right, so what was the, the determinant of the coefficient matrix? 58? Okay. For the X one, what did you guys get? 116. Y was? Okay. And the Z? Okay. So to find our, co our constants now, sorry, our, to find our solution, our X, Y, and Z, X is going to be 116 divided by 58 which is 2. Y is going to be negative 174 divided by 58, which is, okay. And then Z would be the 232 divided by 58, which is 4. Okay, so our solution, 2, negative 3, 4. Now, is this the fastest way to solve a system? Probably not. Once you do it a few times, it gets a little easier. Um, by the time we finish this chapter, you're going to have a whole bunch of ways of solving a system of equations. Okay? I will expect you to show me Kramer's rule on the test. Okay? You'll only have one of them, but you will have to show me that you know how to use that process. Okay? All right. The last thing that we're going to look at is how do we find the area of a triangle? We are going to use... And my board's off again. We're going to have to use um, the determinant of a matrix again. We said the formula for the area of a triangle is what? Okay, one half base times height. All right, you guys said area for a triangle is one half base times height. That requires us to know the length of the height and the length of the base in our triangle, which isn't difficult if our triangle is lined up nicely on our grid. Okay, we can figure out base and height. But if we have a triangle like the one drawn in black, it's not as nice. We don't know the base length and we don't know what the height is. So we can use the vertices of the triangle to help us figure out the area. Okay, it doesn't matter which vertex you start with. What you're going to do is you're going to create a matrix where your x coordinates are your first column, your y coordinates are your second column, and your third column is always ones. Okay, so looking at this, we have vertices at 5, 0. So my first row is 5, 0, 1. Then we have a vertex at 2, 8. So I have 2, 8, and 1. My last vertex is 6, 3, 6, 3, and 1. Okay. It doesn't matter which order you put the vertices in, but you have to have the x, y pairs go together. Does that make sense? So this had to be two numbers from the same vertex. Notice the one half in front of it. Okay, so we're still doing the one half just like we had one half base times height. The plus and minus here is just to allow you to alter the sign and make your answer positive. We cannot have a negative area, okay? 
So if we do the calculation and we're getting a negative answer, this plus minus would allow me to throw a negative in front of it to make it positive. Typically, we would use absolute value bars, right, to make sure something's positive, but we can't use absolute value bars because they look like determinant bars when we're doing a matrix, okay? So the bars here say find the determinant of that matrix. We're then going to multiply that answer by one half, and we're going to alter the sign if we need to, okay? So we need to figure out the determinant of that matrix. So let's go ahead and enter it on our calculator. All right, so 501, 231, 631. Okay, quit out of that. We already have the command in there to find the determinant of matrix A, so I'm just going to hit enter, and I'm getting negative 17. So, what's half of 17? Eight and a half. It is a negative, so we would put we would use that negative to convert it to become a positive 8.5. Okay. So your final answer when you find area will always be positive. All right. Go ahead and try the last one. All right, so we did one half the determinant of our matrix made up with the vertices. What did your determinant come out to be? Determinant was 20. Half of 20 is 10. And we don't need to worry about the plus minus because it was already a positive answer. Yes? Okay. So what you guys are going to do, page 928, questions 29 to 36, 49 and 50.